Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering RSA Conference 2020 San Francisco. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are wrapping up uh, Wednesday here at RSA. 2020, again, it's like 50,000 people. This is a huge conference. Everyone who's got anything to do with cybersecurity is here. Uh, it's the biggest show uh, that we cover outside, I think, of reInvent. So we're excited to have our next guest. She's been on theCUBE many times, but never in, in her current role. She's Pam Murphy, the new CEO of Imperva. Pam, great to see you. Great to see you too, Jeff. And congratulations on Thank your new, uh, you on your new gig. Thank you very much. My so, second month. Your so. second month. So tell us about, you know, kind of what attracted you to the opportunity opportunity, you know, kind of, you haven't been there a whole long time, yeah. but what's, uh, what's kind of your first impression now that you've been at it for a couple days? I, I'm extremely impressed, it really is, uh, how would you describe it, like a dark horse or sort of like the biggest kept secret? So, in terms of my previous roles, as you know, we've, you've interviewed me many times, but I've always been in software vendors who basically build applications and sort of build, build databases. Um, and I guess for the last five to eight years, it's been all about rebuilding and re-architecting applications for the cloud. Right. Um, and through that, I've managed DevOps functions and CISO functions, and so I've been on the consuming side of security. Um, so it's always been a very, you know, area that interested me greatly. Um, as a consumer, you know, obviously the landscape was very much changing. Um, and so I decided to jump over to the other side, right, and lead a company that created and delivered cybersecurity uh, solutions. So, uh, so it's been awesome. As I said, month two, uh, Imperva has just amazing products. Um, I didn't quite know when I took the job exactly everything that it had, but when I came over and saw it, it was really working very hard over the last couple of years to acquire new products and also build and innovate new solutions. Uh, to have such a complete AppSec and DataSec set of solutions today, I mean, I think I can't see anybody else in the market right now that has as complete a solution covering apps and data sec that we have. So it's it's been a really fun time. Um, I must say, you know, it's uh, it's got a great culture as well. Um, there, people have sort of a purpose and sort of, you know, have a, feel that they have a great responsibility, sort of making great solutions which really protect their customers' data and their applications. Right. So it's been really cool. No, I saw on the website, you know, the values are very clearly yeah. stated right up front and uh, it's a really important ones. But before we go deeper there, I want to kind of take you back to your old role yeah. from, a, from a buyer of these services, because as I, as I walk around the floor here, there are so many vendors, right? Big totally. and small, established and new. So for when you were in your other role, and now you, you, it'll yeah. be a great thing for you now that you're on this side of the house, totally. how did you think about sorting it all out? How do you, you know, kind of keep up with you know, the, tr the trusted and true, but yet you know, kind of the new and innovative in this massive sea of vendors and technologies? Totally, uh, one of the things that customers have been saying to me since I came to Imperva, is they want a partnership from us. Because, as you rightly said, we're in a sea of loads of vendors, a lot of whom claim to do the same, the same thing effectively. And it's becoming, and I found the same thing when I was on the other side. Right. There's such a sea of clutter right now, it's really hard to sort of find your way through. Um, customers, and like myself in my former role, you want fewer vendors, um, and you want to have more complete and integrated solutions. Uh, that's what I wanted in my former role, and that's really what I'm focused on now at Imperva, is on the customer side of things. Um, making solutions easier to consume, um, showing them the breadth of what we have, frankly speaking, so that they don't have to go to other solutions. I mean, your worst nightmare is going to a customer and finding out that you had A, B, and C, and they didn't realize that you actually had it. So, from that perspective, I am bringing the voice of the customer with me from my previous role. Right. Uh, it's been echoed in what I'm hearing from our customers now in terms of where they want to see us go and do. Um, so that's really what we're focused on, is just doing a better job of giving customers more integrated solutions because, you know, as you said, the threat landscape right now, it's becoming really complex, um, very much automated. Um, you know, in terms of automated attacks, I think by talking to my team this morning, we think based on the data we're seeing right now that bad bots are probably making up like 30% of web traffic right now. 30%? Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, bad it's, it's bots. getting, 
really hard, right? And that's in terms of you know what they do around account scraping, ATO, um, spam, in terms of all the damage that that could do, right, to you as a customer. So that's what we're focused on. We're focused on, and again, it's bringing from my former role, what do customers need rather than what software companies or tech companies or security companies think that they need. Right. Um, well, you're in such a good spot because you were in, in that buyer yeah. seat, you know, just yeah. a short long, a short time ago. Because the other thing you've seen and where you guys applied across a lot of apps in your old space was AI and machine learning. Yeah. And really the power of that applied to lots of different mm -hmm. uh, challenges, opportunities, and, and really changing the game. Now, now you're fighting against those, those same forces totally. that are being much more sophisticated in their in their attacks. So when you when you sit with the team and you look at kind of the evolution of AI, you look at the evolution of 5G mm -hmm. and, and, and all the IoT connectivity yeah. that's going to mm -hmm. happen and the increased vulnerabilities, um, where do you see kind of the solution evolving? Is it just a, a constant you know, kind of grind and trying to keep up or are there some big strategic things that you see now that you've been there for whatever, all the 60 days, yeah. <laughs> um, to kind of take advantage of some of these opportunities? So we have this, uh, we call it a threat research group within the company and their job is to take all the data from the sensors we have. I mean, we have, we look at about 25 petabytes of data every day. All our solutions are cloud solutions as well as on-prem, so we get the benefit of basically seeing all the data that are hitting our customers every day. I mean, we block about one million attacks every minute, like every minute. Based one on million the, attacks every, every minute. Every minute, right? We protect over three million databases, and you know we've mitigated some of the largest DDoS um, attacks that's ever been reported. So we have a lot of data, right, that we're seeing, and the interesting thing is that you're right, we are having to always, we're using that re threat research data to see what's happening, how the thre threat landscape is changing, therefore guiding us on how we need to augment and add to our products to prevent that. But interestingly, we're also consuming AI and machine learning as well on our products because we're able to use those solutions to actually do a lot of attack analytics and do a lot of predictive research for our customers that can kind of guide them about you know, where things are happening. Because what's happening is that before a lot of the attacks were just um, sort of fast and furious, now we're seeing a pattern towards slow, slow and continuous, if that makes sense. Right, and so right. we're seeing all these patterns and threats coming in. Uh, so we're fighting against those technologies like AI, but we're also using those technologies <laughs> to help us you know, decide where we need to continue to, to add capabilities to stop it. You know, the whole bad box thing wasn't a problem, right, a number of years ago. And so it's it's ever changing in our world, which frankly speaking, makes it an interesting place to be. Because yes. <laughs> who wants to be in a, a static? In a boring cover. place. Exactly. Uh, no, no boring here. Exactly. So another kind of interesting thing about this this particular industry is the competition, you know, kind of aspects to it, mm -hmm. where there is a lot of sharing across competitors on information when there is some new yep. new type of threat or new kind of, of threat pattern. So it's a little bit different than, than just a pure competition because there is a, a shared benefit mm -hmm. in sharing some of this late breaking news. I don't know if you've started to get into to some of that or had yeah. an instant, yeah, it's probably a little bit early, but that's, that's a unique trait, I think. No, it is for sure, and we make all of our data publicly available. If you go to our website, you look at the CTI index, whereby we literally index what we you know, see the level as being, and we're providing all of this data. I mean, we get that from our own sensors, but obviously we pull it as well from other third-party data sources as well and bring it all together. Um, you know, to, to hide that and, and not make it available to everyone would be, a, would be, would be just a very bad thing. Um, for us, we are, and I, I'm still trying to find some, but, but in terms of most of the vendors out there focus on pieces of apps or pieces of data, where we've got both combined, right? Which gives us a, a, a huge closed loop advantage of being able to mesh that data together and see the full track record of what's happening from the data, from the, from the application down to the data and back again. So that's a benefit that we have that literally we're taking great advantage of right now. Um, because in other cases, our competition is sort of point solution based, right? For every one of the best of breed solutions that we have. So. Right, right. And it, it always goes back to the data, right? Yes, I mean, it's, exactly. it's always about the data. That's the thing, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, why, why is all these things happening? ATOs and attacks and spamming, it's your, as you said, it's to get to the data. And that's why we say we protect data and all paths leading to it, because fundamentally that's what customers care about. Right, right. So it, 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 
it's crazy. The data is the business, and the data is what you're protecting totally. in the business. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so put you on the spot. So, what are some of your kind of top priorities? You know, kind of out of the gate, they brought you in. You're all excited. You see this great team and opportunity. You know, what are some of the things if we sit down a year from now, or maybe six months at Black Hat? That, you, uh, that you've got on your plate that you're working on? So I think innovation will always be you know, first and, and foremost. Um, we have Gardner Magic Quadrant and Forrester leading edge products, but in this industry you need to be paranoid, you always need to be staying ahead. So from an innovation perspective, that's where we're focused. We're working on a lot of cool stuff which we'll be rolling out uh, through the rest of the year. Um, Platform as well is really important. I mentioned that we have the unique advantage of having a huge amount of data at the application level and also at the database level. And that's allowing us to give use cases and value back to our customers that they don't have right now from any other vendor. So we're working with customers on, on getting that done. Um, I think as well, just purely in terms of um, publicizing what we have, right? I think we could do, uh, I found a lot of things, right, coming to Imperva that right, I feel right. we didn't communicate that you to didn't the market. necessarily exactly. know. <laughs> exactly, so I think there's a lot of capabilities that we're going to do um, a lot in terms of publicizing them this year. So there's a lot of really, really cool stuff happening and uh, you know, great momentum going on in the company right now. Well, so. uh, well, good for them for getting you. They're very fortunate to have, well, you, uh, have you on board. I'm excited. All right, Pam, well thanks for taking a few yeah. minutes and again, congratulations on your new role. We really look forward to watching this story unfold. Thanks, Jeff. All right, Thank she's you. Pam, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE, we're at RSA 2020. It's the year we're supposed to know everything with the benefit of hindsight, but we're still learning. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.